This week's Torah portion uh, is a, a sort of what it's going to look like when we're in Israel. The, the form of governance, uh, 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 the, you know, uh, conquering the land, Kohanites, Leviites, so on and so forth. One of the most fascinating, challenging verses is the verse to do with the form of governance. Uh, it says, Som tasim alecha melech, in my non-King James Bible English, in the event that you shall put upon yourselves a, a king. Half the commentators throughout Jewish history say the wording here implies that God's saying this is a recommendation. This is even just, if you want to do this, do this. It's, it's a freebie if you want to have a king, meaning this system of governance, this balagan in the land of Israel, I'm going to leave to you, to the Jewish people. The other half of the commentators say, no, if God writes it, it's a mitzvah. It's a commandment. You have to have a king. So what's going on here? Our hero this week is Rabbi Ephraim Shlomo of Lonchis, the clear car. He's living with the Maral of Prague together with the Golem in the 16th, 17th century in Prague. He has a beautiful understanding of this verse. He says there's a split with the commentators. Some say this, some say this. Some even say it's a prophecy. Remember in the time of Samuel, the Jewish people are going to ask God for a king. Uh, and, and so some might say that this verse is kind of, you know, implying that future time. So what's going on here? And the Kliakar says, you know, I interestingly, if I look at what it says in the book of Samuel, I could even understand that surely it's not a commandment, it's not a mitzvah to have a king. Why? Because the people of Israel came to Samuel the prophet and said, we want a king. Samuel's reaction, he's sad, he's raged. He goes to God and says, why do they want a king? They're, they're upset with me. From this, you can understand that having a king is a bad thing. If it was a commandment, a good thing, he should have been joyous, gone to God and said, finally, they want a king. So what's going on here? And the clear car says the devil is in the details. Notice what the people of Israel asked Samuel. They said, Tena lanu melech, give us a king. Tena lanu implies, let him be in our pocket. Clear car says it's like rabbis we see today in communities where, where communities, they want, they want rabbis, tena lanu rabbis. They want rabbis to be in their pocket. They pay the rabbi's salary so that the rabbi will give them the pusk in the way they want. He'll give them nice droshes in the synagogue that tell them exactly what they want to hear. And the rabbi needs to know his place. It's beneath the community. They don't want a rabbi. They don't want a king who is above them. And this is why God says to Samuel, they want a king, give them a king. But tell them, Sima alehem melech. My kind of king, the king you need to have, is not a king that's in your pocket. It's a king that is above you. Sima alenu. And that is the whole, it's a world apart, this difference, because the Israelites want a king that's in their pocket, and God says the king you need is a king that is above you. Why? So that you learn how to fear the king. Why do you need to learn how to fear the king? Clear Kara says the, this, the importance of this mitzvah, the importance of this commandment, I think is that the only way to really fear God is through learning how to fear a worthy, albeit a worthy king. And this, room, this is a beautiful interpretation. It reminds me of the only beautiful interpretation I know of the Rav Kook about the Song of Songs. Song of Songs, is it Judaism's most erotic, greatest erotic piece of literature describing the erotic relationship between man and woman? Or is it, as the sages teach us, uh, uh, the uh, love and, and you know, passion describing this loving, passionate relationship between God and the people of Israel? And the Rav Kook tells us it's both. How is it both? Because Song of Songs teaches us that the only way to truly learn how to passionately love God is through passionately loving your husband or wife. When a person truly passionately loves the other, this is the only way they can learn to love God. And I think that's what the clear car is saying here. Just like there is love of God, there's also fear of God. And the only way we can get fear of God is through fearing the right kind of king. And that's what this mitzvah is about. Thoughts on Shoftim. Shabbat Shalom.